Good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our morning prayer call, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the very best 15 minutes of your day. 15 minutes where we will talk to God and he will talk to us and we together will walk through his word. You know, this week we delve into the question, what do you do when you're trying to believe in what your eyes cannot see? What do you do when, when you believe in something you have no reason to believe that with your physical senses? This morning, I would like to talk to you about one thing and one thing only that can prevent you from seeing what you believe. What you believe when it comes to your health, seeing what you believe when it comes to, to a promotion, what you believe when it comes to your marriage. And, and the simple word I want to talk to you about this morning is trust. Trust. You see, often we say in the body of Christ, have faith in God, and, and that's important. You must do that to be saved. But, but there is a, there's a difference between faith and trust. Faith and trust. To have faith in something is to, um, to believe in something, to, to, to have a, a devotion to something to have faith in something. But beloved, when you have trust, it's different. Trust is to have confidence in something, to, to have something that you can rely on. Mm. So, so, so uh, this morning I'm talking about trusting that God will not leave us when we need him the most. Trusting in him. Because God is standing there, my friend, asking you, will you trust me? Will you trust me even when you cannot see me? Will you trust me? Will you trust me even when it doesn't make sense? Will you trust me? Trust me because he's saying trust me because I love you more than anyone has ever loved anything. God is saying trust me because I will always have your your interest in mind, no matter what happens in your life. God is saying, trust me, because I will stand in the gap between calm and crazy, and I will never walk away from you. God is saying, trust me, because, <laughs> because I love you so much. I, I've given you, you gifts and talents that you don't even realize you have, and some of them you don't even understand. You, you can't even explain how you can do things that others cannot do. They go to school for years to do what you can do in, innately. God is saying, trust me, because I love you so much that I, I waited patiently for you to come out of your sin. I, I waited like a kid with his, with his face pressed up against the glass waiting for his father to come home. I waited and I watched. And I watched and I waited. I waited while you slept around. I waited while you woke up in somebody else's bed. I, I waited while you got high. I waited while you lied and cheated and stole. I, I still waited. I love you that much. So will you trust me? But I get it. It's hard at times to trust. <laughs> but But it... It was the same with the people in the Bible. These people actually walked with Jesus every day, and they had problems trusting. So when you feel it's hard to trust, I want you to, to go to this book in the Bible, uh, John, John 6, when you have problems with trusting. And read that entire chapter, but I'm going to focus on the, the back end of that chapter. You see, Jesus had just finished feeding 5,000 men and possibly as many as 15,000 people when you count the women and children. The people that have followed him into the desert, into a hot and un uncomfortable place. <laughs> they followed him into a hot and uncomfortable place, and Jesus is teaching them and, and things they did not quite understand. Question, 
What do you do when God is teaching you a lesson in life in a hot and uncomfortable place? I, I, I'm not trying to hear that right now, God. I want some water. <laughs> I'm not trying to hear that right now, dear God. I need to get my mortgage taken. I'm not trying to hear all that right now, God. I need to take care of my my marriage, my husband, my wife, my children are acting crazy. I'm in a hot and uncomfortable place, and you're trying to teach me a lesson? Now, follow me, follow me, follow me. Under, under the, 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 the Levitical law in the Bible, the Jewish law, people were forbidden to touch anything that was dead. Jews could not touch anything that was dead, and, and they were definitely not supposed to touch a, a dead human body. So what does Jesus do? He, he asked them to not only to touch, but to eat something that was presumably dead. Jesus tells these people of Jewish heritage to follow. He says, follow me now. He says, whoever eat my flesh <laughs> and drink my blood will have eternal life. Now, now hear these words as if you had never heard them before. That's like something out of a vampire book. These, this, this group of men and women who was not supposed to even touch a dead body, but they have been told to eat a body. And then, if that was not crazy enough, turn around and just suck out all the blood in it. <laughs> There's someone in this crowd says, Master, you... You've asked us a hard thing. Let me start right there. How many times have you been in a situation you feel like God is asking you a hard thing to do? God, I don't understand. That's a hard thing. Lord, why, why my child, you're putting me through a hard thing. Lord, why, they, why do I have to deal with this illness? You're putting me through a hard thing. Someone in the crowd spoke up and said, Master. You've asked us to do a hard thing. And then Jesus asked the question, did I offend you? Think about it. The creator of the universe asked a question of a man, and he says to him, did that offend you? Follow me, follow me, follow me. He, he's asking you today. Are you offended by something that has shocked you in life? He's asking you today that same question. Have, have you gone from quickly trying to understand me, being taught by me, to simply being offended? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So think about it. You, 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 I had to talk to a friend of mine. You never smoked a cigarette in your life but got lung cancer. Well, think about this. You, 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 something happens to you traumatically, and then you stop going to church. Something happens in your marriage, in your family, and you stop going to church. You stop believing because you were shocked by life. Again, Jesus asked the person in the crowd, did I offend you? Now we get to the good part of the story. It's at this point in the narrative that the people start to, to walk away. They start to dip, <laughs> leave. And the disciples start to walk away too. Some of the disciples, not the 12, but some of the other disciples. Huh? I'm sure people walked away who, who heard about Jesus walking across water. I'm sure some of the people walked away when he said that had eaten the fish that Jesus provided. These cats saw Jesus heal the sick cast out, they even raised the dead, yet they just walked away, just left. Why did they walk away? Same way pe reason people walk away from God today, because they did not understand. So they walked away. They left the faith because they didn't understand. So they walked away. Things did not make sense. So they walked away. So what does Jesus do? 
You need to jump up and say, yo, 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 come back, come back, come back. Come back. Let me explain to you about the blood. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean like eat my body. Dude, come back. Let me explain to you. No. Why? Here you go. Sometimes the best teaching is done in small groups like we have this morning. So Jesus just let them walk away. See, Jesus knew they were walking away simply because they didn't understand, but he refused to clarify to keep them. And then he looks at the 12 and asks the question that, that still gives me chills. Sometimes it's hard for me to even ask, to, re, to read his response from the Bible with getting a lump in my throat. As the crowd gets smaller and smaller and people are walking away and leaving them because they don't understand, Jesus looks at the twelve of them and says, Will you lead me too? Will you lead me too? You going to lead me? You going to walk away too? In other words, you, you don't see me open eyes. You see me wave that little dead girl. You saw Lazarus walk out the tomb. His body was stinking. He was dead so long. And he began to walk. My credit score should be good with you. My credit score should be at least 800. <laughs> I should get some credit with you. And despite all of that, cannot you trust me enough to stay with me even when you don't understand Cannot you trust me even when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm doing things in your family that don't make sense? Cannot you trust me when it goes against every grain of your nature to stay? Jesus looks at the 12 and asks the question, will you leave me too? But thank God for Peter. Thank God for Peter. Thank God for Peter. Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Let me put it in today's lingo. <laughs> Where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? Beloved, when you try with all your heart to believe things that your eyes cannot see, can I give you a little advice? Trust in God. Trust in God. Trust in God. When you don't understand the will of God, Trust in God. When, when it's hard to have faith in God, trust in God. When it goes against your nature, your urges, your intellect, your culture, your background, even common sense, trust in God. Why? Because like Peter said, where, where, where are we going to go? Lord, to whom shall we go? I don't know about you, but I will trust God. I'm going to trust God because simply, um, quite frankly, I, I don't have nowhere else to go. For this reason, I will trust God. I will trust God. I will trust God. Let us pray. Thank you for this opportunity to come before you today, dear God. We are so honored that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords will just have time with us in the morning. That you will take this meeting with me. <laughs> and hear our prayers and, and speak to our hearts great God that you are we thank you for the sun that burns in the sky above us we thank you for the grass that grows under our feet but of all the things we thank you for we thank you for the gift of life and for giving your son to die that we may have life with more abundance today God this is a special prayer for your children to allow them to understand that there is a purpose in their lives greater than anything they could see, smell, touch, or taste. Somebody under the sound of my voice needed to hear that because their trust was wavering. Let them understand there is a purpose that is too big for them to even conceive, that there is something that, that, that you have for them, that you want them just to trust you a little bit longer, a little harder, a little deeper, a little slower to simply trust in you even when it doesn't make sense. So God, allow us to understand just how much you love us and that you would never allow us to go through a test for no reason at all. So we will not only just, we will not only just 
depend on you, dear God. We're not only going to have reliance on you, which is our faith, dear God, but we're going to go a step further, dear God, and, and trust you, even when we can't trace you. Stand by us in the rain, dear God. Stand by us when the sun burns above us, dear God. Stand by us when the ground shakes under our feet, dear Father. Stand by us in the darkness of night. Why? Because your word says, ask us to submit to you in all our ways and you will make our path straight. So as we submit, dear God, stand by us. And when you do that, great God, that you are, we'll give you the praise and the glory and the adoration that you deserve. For you are our King. You are our Lord. And you are our deliverer. In your son Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 Beloved, thank you so very much for joining us this morning. And we'll